If you want our countries to address climate change, first pose our debt. This is a rather powerful statement because on one hand, it gives you the impression that the issue of climate change is actually becoming of a secondary concern to some country while their actually key and primary concern is the financial aspect or if you prefer their debt situation which is somehow quite fair you know well hello guys welcome to your favorite podcast smart intellectual knowledgeable african i'm philip sika and i'm very happy to be with you today um this is we are actually right in the festive season so i want to take the time to wish you all merry christmas i send you tons of you know like positive vibes and energies so that you you know you enjoy these amazing times with your family and loved ones and also with me through this podcast <laughs> i hope it's 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 uh, it's going to be i hope you are all fine actually well and uh before i actually you know continue discussing this very interesting topic let me invite you for those of you who are not yet members of this amazing community to actually click on the subscribe button and to also activate the ring bell so that you do not miss out on the very interesting you know um upcoming episodes well today i'm going to discuss um this very interesting and broad topic of climate change you know climate change is is of is of general concern you know why is it of general concern because first we only have one planet so unfortunately if we get to damage it you know um too much and too bad unfortunately we won't be able to live anywhere else at least not in the next um 50 years you know the second reason why climate change is very important and very broad is because it's it's that kind of topic where the issues you know does not only stick to to one area or to one sector like let me give an example if you have a problem let's say um if you if you want to think about you know the sports sector for instance you know you let's say your country have to play the world cup and unfortunately you know your national team is not as good as you you would have expected and second they may not have you know the necessary financial support to go and play the world cup yes it may be terrible it may be a very difficult problem it may be a very difficult situation because i mean as a national of your country you will dream to see your your country fly you know among those great you know so called nations like brazil portugal cote d'ivoire and etc but unfortunately your country cannot make it so this is a problem but this is a problem with no external ramification it's not like due to the fact that your country cannot you know attend the world cup it's going to have some you know the remainder effect on the health situation or the economic growth of your um of your country the the economic development of your country you know you get what i'm what i'm trying to say so these are the kind of um issues that can be addressed thanks to you know a silo reflection or a silo vision well when it comes to climate change this is very different why is very different because like i said climate change is very broad and climate change has many ramification to you know like many other sectors of you know the economy climate change has a strong link with health 
It has a strong link with economic growth, economic performances. It also has a strong link with human capital because if you live in an environment that is not, you know, environmental friendly or or climate friendly, you may put yourself in a situation where you are highly exposed to sudden disease. And if you get sick, you won't be able to go to work. You won't be able, you know, to work on that company or that startup you want to create or, you know, like take to the next level. So like it or not, climate change is part of our daily life. And it's a topic that you are going to hear me address from many angles. In the introduction, I, I actually shared a very powerful statement, a very strong quote that was actually made by very powerful and high level African seniors. So I invite you to stay tuned till the end of this episode so that you, you get to know the names of those very, um, powerful, you know, African leaders who actually dared to say that if you want us, you know, as African nations, as developing economies, to actually address climate change, you need to pose our debt. So, how should we construe this statement? Well, today, when assessing the situation with regard to climate change, I am very keen to present you with a new perspective with a new angle. I want us to actually look at the current debt situation of Africa versus the climate change needs that actually need to happen on the continent. I won't be surprised actually if some of you do not understand the connection or the link between the debt situation and the climate solution. Well, allow me to present you with the tools or the rationale of my approach so that you can actually connect the dots yourself. Climate change is a reality. Climate change is already a problem we are all aware about. And the second aspect of climate change is climate solution. There are actually a set of solutions that are existing. And in my opinion, I can actually divide them into two categories. You have the least expensive categories and you have the most expensive categories. My point being, in order for a continent or for a country to actually solve the climate change situation, they will have to invest some amount of money into implementing the already existing solution. And in some scenario, they may be very lucky if they have enough capital to actually invest into implementing the least expensive solution. However, when it will come to implementing the most expensive solution, that's actually where the question of debt crisis will actually matter. And why do I say so? Because for African nations, this is a reality. African nations are already borrowing money at a very expensive interest rate. According to the latest report for 2023, many African nations are actually borrowing and paying interest rate eight times more expensive, you know, than developed nations. And if you want to understand why the cost of borrowing money is so expensive for African nations, it's because they are perceived as, you know, riskier than developed nations. Investors, international creditors, see them as a high risk 
you know, when it comes to repaying their debt. Therefore, they decide, you know, to apply, you know, a premium on top of the interest rate that they're already paying, which results in overall a repayment that sometimes can equate twice the borrowed amount. So if you're putting yourself in a situation where you are over in debt, it may be very difficult for you to actually raise additional finance to actually solution a newly created problem. And when I say newly created problem is because it is no news now that the African continent is not in the top list of global polluter. The entire continent is only responsible for less than 4% of the global pollution. And if you want to find out more, I invite you to actually listen to some of the previous episodes that I made discussing the question. So the reason why I'm talking about the African debt crisis is because, like I said, to implement climate solution, one nation needs money. To implement climate solution, you need to be in a situation where if you do not have the funds available domestically, you should be able to access the fund internationally. But unfortunately, if your credit record as a nation, you know, is not half clean or as interesting, you know, as some experts would say, it's going to be very difficult for you to actually meet your financial, you know, objective. So I'm sure by now you understand the link between Africa debt crisis and climate solution. Climate change itself does not just represent a physical threat to the continent. And when I say physical threat, I refer to all the environment um, or actually all the environmental threats such as flood, you know, global warming, etc. But in addition to those threats, climate change, particularly in the African context, does also represent a financial threat. It does represent a financial threat because the continent is highly exposed to a situation where the existing level of public resources does not actually match with, you know, the amount of financial that they need to inject or to disburse towards implementing, you know, even the least expensive solution at a larger scale. Another reason why it is very important to also consider the debt crisis of the African continent when thinking about climate solution is to also consider the fact that 50 years ago, climate change was not part of the government priorities. And that is a reality not just for African nations, but also for developed nations. 50 years ago, when governments were actually budgeting, they were focusing on more traditional economic sector, such as health, transport, education, telecommunication, etc. They were focusing on those traditional sectors and trying, you know, to support their economy to the best of their abilities. Today, government all across the world, in addition to those traditional sectors, they have to focus now on a new element, a new sector, which is the climate sector. So for government that were actually doing relatively little, you know, in trying or in supporting traditional economic sectors such as agriculture, such as transportation, 
their child education, they now find themselves in the situation where the public budget at their disposal has not really increased. Second, they now have to borrow money from external creditors so that they can sustain their local economy and now they have to actually maintain and manage you know the their economic development and economic progress while finding additional resources to fight a newly created problem so when combining all these elements you can now realize that it is one thing to talk about climate change but it is another thing to also consider the financial sources that will help african nations face this newly created problem because if african nations default on their foreign debts how come are they going to be able to actually first access new source of finance and second finance the most expensive solution that are actually not nice to have but they are actually a necessity you know for the continent protection and for the continent fight you know against climate change well as promised this powerful statement was actually made by William Ruto, Musafaki Mahmat, Akinwumi Adesina and Patrick Verkuyen. Mr. Ruto is the president of the Republic of Kenya, while Mr. Faki is the chairman of the African Union Commission and Dr. Adesina is the president of the African Development Bank Group and Dr. Verkuyen is the chief executive of the Global Center on Adaptation. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you found it enlightening and interesting as usual. Thank you for listening to Sika Talks, the podcast where strong realities meet powerful perspectives. A bientôt.